Hey, that's that makes my day. It does what? <laughs> we did lose that. That was. Come to me from wherever you might be and let yourself be known. Bring to me every heavy broken thing you cannot bear alone. Take from me my tender care and share it far and wide. Follow me, though it cost you everything, and find abundant life. Come to me as the child you're meant to be and let yourself be blessed. Bring to me everything you're carrying and I will give you rest. Take from me the peace I give for my grace is enough. Follow me in the way that sets you free to touch your world with
life's demands and frenzied pace, come to join the people gathered here to seek and find God's grace. In the pastures of God's goodness, we lie down to rest our soul from the waters of God's mercy. Deeply are made whole at the table of God's presence. All the saints are richly fed with the oil of God's anointing. Into service we are led. Loving God, today we lift our hearts to you in one voice as we pray. We come to you as children in need of your blessing. We bring every burden we are carrying and we look to you for rest. Show us your peace and grace and give us the wisdom to follow on the way, which sets us free to hear your truth. Then, Lord, grant us the Tell your truth to the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We pray together Psalm 24 in dialogue with one another. You'll read the bold print as I read the light. And together we pray and dwell in God's word. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. A sunburned face and weathered hands. He stretches out the nets again. Steps among those twisted lines. And sorts them out in his good time. And sometimes I picture God that way untangling all the mess I've made, unraveling my line so I can fish again one day. Sometimes I picture God that way.
While her tender hands turn tangles loose From gum in hair to knots in shoes A quilter's skill, a mother's joy she frees her little girls and boys And sometimes I picture God that way Untangling all the mess I've made Unraveling my kite so I can fly again one day Sometimes I picture God that way Sometimes I picture God that way Untangling all the mess we make Unraveling our darkest night To weave a brand new day Sometimes I picture God that way Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church of Asheville. We are so glad to be together with old friends and new to be in this place worshiping together this morning. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who is a guest with us today and invite you to complete the bottom of the Connect Now insert um, in your worship bulletin. And you can place it in one of the baskets by the doors as you leave this morning. It will help us know that you are here today and allow us to send you a note this week. I also want to welcome our friend Kyle Matthews, who is leading us in worship as our guest artist and musician. Kyle has been a singer and songwriter in Nashville and has toured the globe sharing his music. Since 2008, he has been a minister on staff at First Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina. We are so glad they let you sneak away today and be with us. Welcome, Kyle. And we welcome back to our pulpit the Reverend Dr. Will Willimon, professor and former dean of the chapel at Duke University. We have enjoyed getting to know you over these last few weeks and are looking forward to hearing from you again this morning. As we have welcomed our guests, let's now welcome each other. Share with your neighbors the peace of Christ by saying the peace of Christ be with you and responding and also with you. Share now the peace of Christ.
This morning's reading comes from Mark. Listen closely for God's word to us today. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when, on, when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask for, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in the time we have, Help us do justice and work to right what's wrong. Forgive the things we've done and make us one in the time we have. Lord, in the time we have, let us love mercy and cry the tears of joy. To see some friendless soul be welcomed home in the time we have. You give us every breath we're breathing you sent us Christ to give life meaning our offering to you is what we do with the time we have in the time we Lord, in the time we have, help us walk humbly and do what love would do. For that your will might be done, your kingdom come. Oh, in the time. 
time we have You give us every breath we're breathing You sent us Christ to give life meaning Our offering to you is what we do with the time we have Oh, in the time we I hope it has been evident to you how much Patsy and I have enjoyed these four Sundays with you. Uh, thank you. And I first met Kyle Matthews when his father invited me to do the deacon's retreat at First Baptist Greenville. And Methodists just crave Baptist approval. So this has been wonderful for me. Thank you. Now. Uh, the great preacher Barbara Brown Taylor, I heard her say in a sermon, uh, have any of you ever had a friend tell you truth, truth that was maybe you had avoided your whole life hearing, truth that was so painful and yet so true? Have any of you ever had that happen? Well, now you know, she said, why we crucified Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not only the way and the life. He insists on being the truth. Well, we started this journey, you and I, four weeks ago, when we noted great crowds clamoring after Jesus. Where are the crowds now? They've gone. Why did they leave? I think we're about to know why. Uh, why? Uh, I gotta ask you, I, I watched you closely when you were listening to today's gospel. Why is it on a beautiful summer Sunday why the common lectionary would gather us together and say out of all the things we could hear from scripture, we're going to give you one of the most gruesome, gory, disgusting stories in all of scripture. Why? Uh, well, John the Baptist, we're, we're told that Herod, liked Baptist preachers when he first heard them. Uh, Mark says, John the Baptist, that, that he was adored by Herod. Herod admired him for his holiness, his righteousness. Herod liked to hear John the Baptist preach. But a lot of times, Mark says, a lot of times his sermons were over Herod's head. He couldn't figure them out. Uh, how come... Herod moved from being an admirer of Baptist preaching to a killer of Baptist preachers. Well, it's because John uh, told the truth to Herod. This powerful man, uh, he told him, it is not right for you to be having an affair with your brother's wife. It is not right for you to be committing adultery and then lying about it. It's not right for you to abuse your power. Yes, I know this is hard to believe, but all the way back then, there were politicians who had one marriage after another and committed adultery the whole time during their marriages, and then they lied about it. Well, it was a long time back then. And, um, you know, the sad thing is, you're not as surprised that there is an adulterous, lying politician as you are surprised that there was a Baptist preacher who told the truth to a lying, adulterous politician. 
That's kind of sad. Uh, I tell you, it, it, was, it was back then. Back then, preachers didn't strive to be a quivering mass of availability and affirmation. Back then, preachers uh, knew that part of the job was you you got to tell the truth. Uh, long ago, when I finished seminary, I went back to South Carolina. I, I kind of had a sense I was going back like in a war. It was the civil rights movement was in its heyday. Uh, four of the young clergy who had mentored me and led me to seminary, by the time I got out of seminary and got back, three of them had been run out of the ministry because of their preaching. Uh, I remember a district superintendent talking to me, callow youth that I was, and I said to him, I just, I want to get to know and love my people. And the district superintendent said to me, lots of luck. Uh, he said, son, uh, you're so damn charming, you'll be fine. But, let me tell you, the problem is, you see, you're working with Jesus. And Jesus don't only want to love them, he wants to tell the truth to them. Uh, you watch yourself now, boy. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, when I became bishop, uh, and I know you Baptists don't believe in bishops, but just for the sermon, try, okay? And... <laughs> When I became bishop, went to Alabama, it seemed like a high percentage of my clergy had forsaken the role of being preacher of the truth and decided to be pastoral caregivers, empathetic, ambulance chasers, hand holders. Uh, and, and I remember asking a lay leader, what kind of pastor? Uh, do you see for your next pastor? And the layperson responded, uh, our pastor now is just one of the kindest, most caring men I've ever met. And I said, yeah, I hear that about him. And the layperson said, Bishop, unfortunately, that's not good enough for our church today. Bishop, you're going to have to find a pastor that's got gifts for telling hard truth to people who don't want to hear it. Well, uh, I found such a pastor. Uh, two years later, when I asked that same layperson, I said, wow, this has been quite a turnaround here. Wow, you, you people really seem to have caught the spirit and are on the move. Wow, how did that happen? And the layperson said, you know, I, I don't think we'd ever had a pastor that, uh, that believed in Jesus Christ and believed in us enough to tell us the truth. I remember the night at the, at the board meeting, he said, here are the numbers, people. You continue to do what you've always done you continue to walk down that road, the last Methodist is going to turn out the lights here about uh, 2025. We got born again. Makes you wonder. How many Christians out there have been lost? Because nobody believed in them as Christians enough to, to find a way to tell them the truth. You wonder how, how many uh, churches, how many churches are stumbling into oblivion because they've decided, let's just be a club of nice older adults who get along with each other, and let's don't worry about being people of the truth, okay? I wonder what Herod's legacy would have been if somebody had cared enough about this powerful political man to find a way to tell him the truth. Uh, well, 
we were at a preacher's meeting, and we were having a discussion. Usually, it's kind of what we do at preacher's meetings. We spend most of our time complaining about you, the laity. And we were having a wonderful time. And people were saying, these laity, they come to church on Sunday morning just to have be patted on the head and stroked. They don't want to hear the gospel truth. These laity, they just, they don't come to be upset. They want to come to hear a bunch of sweet nothings that they've always heard all their life. Amen? Well, somehow this layperson had sneaked into that meeting. And she spoke up and she said, speaking for all laity everywhere, I agree that few of us come to church on Sunday morning hoping to be disturbed, hoping to be bumped and jolted, yes. But if there's one thing that we laity uh, fear more than that, it's being bored out of our minds Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. I tell you, when church becomes a place where you don't hear anything, you couldn't hear as well at a Rotary Club meeting, and at least Rotary meets at a convenient time of the week and serves lunch, and who? Uh, why is it that I will remember the layperson, the one layperson who gets upset by something I say in a sermon, who says, I'm offended, it, you shouldn't talk like... I remember that one layperson. I don't know the names, even, of the dozens of laity who are no longer here because they've just given up that anything new and life-changing and demanding will ever be uttered or heard. Uh, and yet, uh, unlike Herod, I mean, there you are. I preached on forgiveness. I think it was Jesus talking about forgiving 70 times 7. And after service, standing at the door, a woman comes out and she said, do you mean to tell me that my abusive husband, who made my life hell for 10 years, Jesus expects me now to forgive him? And I immediately moved into my most active, defensive, non-defensiveness. And I said, uh, 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 well, you know we only have 20 minutes for these sermons and I, I, uh, uh, spouse abuse is a horrible evil. And, and, and uh, uh, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm too nice a person to, to say things like that to you. But, 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 but uh, it, 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 uh, Jesus did say, forgive your enemies, and I can't think of a bigger enemy than your ex-husband. And, uh, uh, and he said 70 times 7, and that's a whole lot of forgiveness. And I, uh, 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 so I think it, 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 it does sound like something Jesus might have said. <laughs> and with that... She stood up to her full height and said, thank you, just checking. <laughs> and she walked out the door. And I tell you, it was like the heavens opened, a dove descended, there was a voice, and the voice said, who told you that your job was to protect her from me? When you look at her, all you see is a victim. Oh my, you've been a victim of injustice. Contort your voice into a whine. All moral responsibility is now off your back and just keep your head down and go. When I look at her, I see a disciple. I'm going to change this whole world with her if you'll get out of the way and let me have her. Uh... Before I go, let me just ask you, because I haven't had the opportunity to get to know all of you that well, but how many of you, I know some of the preachers this church has had in the past, and so I ask you, how many of you 
uh, even though you're not sleeping with your sister-in-law, uh, or maybe you're not the best student of the Bible. How many of you, after hearing a sermon, have been led to murder a Baptist preacher? <laughs> Let's see the hands. Really? That suggests to me that you have learned there's no way to follow Jesus Christ and be truth averse. Uh, you know, he's not only the way, the life. He insists on being the truth. Amen. Stir your church on our Many thanks to Kyle and to Will 
for your presence with us and for leading us in worship today. We are grateful for the gifts you have generously shared. Friends, we invite you to come back this evening and join us for the first Academy for the Arts Faculty Summer Concert Series. If the weather allows, we will be outside. If it is rainy or stormy, the concert will move inside. But there will be a concert, rain or shine. Tonight's concert will spotlight our traditional faculty members sharing old time and bluegrass music. Next week will be the second concert and we'll be inside um, highlighting our classical and jazz faculty. Both weeks you'll be invited to bring a donation that supports our scholarship fund um, to, to help welcome students to our academy. And we also invite you to stay and spend time with friends during a dessert social. And then we invite you to come back ne next Sunday for worship as we welcome guest musician Frank Southacorvo and our own Tim Owings to our pulpit. And now we'll come and bring our benediction. Go forth. In the name of the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, go forth in his name to serve God and neighbor in all that you do. You are sent in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.